Ryan had us dreaming of a Ferrari win at their home circuit, but it was the champion elect who put in a 10 out of 10 performance to claim victory at the Temple of Speed today. Welcome back to episode number 326 of Grid Talk. Today we're here to discuss the 2023 Italian Grand Prix. My name is George Housen and joining me today we have Grid Talk co-host Tom Downey. Hello. And Wayne Medford. Hello. As well as Phil Matthew from the Grip Strip Podcast. Hola. But before we get into the episode, we must thank our sponsor for this episode, Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and uh, card games available to play right from your phone. Head to our, head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. And today, unfortunately, we're going to start with uh, the Alpha Tari drivers. Uh, Yuki Sonoda didn't even get off the line. He had some sort of engine failure before the race started, so that's a DNS to his name. Uh, Liam Lawson, though, he had a decent day, uh, ended up in 13th. Probably the best he could really hope for uh, this weekend, Tom Downey. But I think more than anything for Lawson, it's just putting himself in the shop window. I think at this point, it'd probably be quite surprising if he doesn't get a full-time Alpha Tari drive for next season. You surprised me then with my full name. I thought I was in trouble. Um, yes, no, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, no, honestly, I, I'm really impressed with Liam Lawson. I know he's only been in for two race weekends. And I know Monza goes, oh, it's easy, easy can't get Monza. I mean, it made... Um, what's his face? The other Dutch one look good last year. Um, Christ, what's what's his bloody name? Nick De Vries. Yeah, him. Thank you. So, so <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, my mind went completely blank. Then um, that says a lot about how forgetful he is. Um, you, you know, it was it, it was it was a, a good weekend for him. You know, in a circuit where the Alpha Tauri struggled, you know, at least his made it round both formation laps. Um, you know, you know, I mean, you know, just touching on Soda briefly, just as I know. There's nothing to say because it's a this is a race review and his car conked out on the first formation lap. So feel for him, you know, of all the times you have to conk out, that's one I'd want at least of all. You know, because he's done all the work on the weekend. But yes, you know, you can't do much about that, sadly. But yeah, Lawson, I'm really impressed. To the point where I think what um Alpha Tower should do, when Danny Rick comes back. Do they take Yuki out that seat? Because he's been in that team for three years and he hasn't really showed many signs for improvement. You know, just throwing that one out there for some spice, and I'm not saying we discussed that, but, you know, Liam Lawson in what is the worst car on the grid and did a two-stop strategy, we should point out, um, was on the fringes of the points. You know, a couple of other things going his way. He he could have had a point in Monza. And that Alpha Tauri is not a quick car. Yes, it's got the Red Bull Honda Ford powertrain powered by Red Bull Ford Honda, um, but it's but you know it, it's it's you know it's still fundamentally quite a draggy car, and as we saw, it struggles with pace. So I'm really impressed with Liam Lawson. I think he's been in that seat for the rest of the year, get some good seat time because Danny Rick is a bit of a known quantity. Unfortunately, he's a bit. You know, he's a shadow of his former self, you know, after he went to McLaren and got rinsed. Um, but yeah, you know, just, you know, we need to see Liam Lawson in that car because he's doing bits at the minute and it, it would be a gross injustice if he gets taken out of it, if you ask me. It would be a gross injustice, but yeah, uh, like you mentioned, uh, three into two does not go. And when Daniel Ricciardo's back, which he might be for Singapore, Sophia's been saying a few times on a few of the shows that it's more likely to be back for Japan, but whenever he's back, he's going to be back at some point this season. Do you put Ricardo in the car? Do you leave Lawson in there? It's a tough one. I don't see Sonoda going anywhere, personally. I think he's doing a decent job, to be honest, um, especially considering how bad he's been in the past. I think this season he's actually doing all right. So, But who knows? It's uh, you know it's Alpha Terry, but it's owned by Red Bull, and um, predicting them is uh, is very, very difficult. Um, likewise, Alpine as well, Owain. Um, They had a very good weekend at Zandvoort last weekend. Uh, Gasly getting a podium, fully deserved. Great strategy calls with that one. Uh, but absolutely back down to earth in this one. Esteban Ocon ended up in 19th. He didn't finish some sort of mechanical failure, I believe, was what afflict was afflicting him. Pierre Gasly down in 16th. Uh, the car just not having a fun time along the long straights in Monza because of the Renault engine. And it wasn't exactly a fluke either. They were really bad in qualifying too. 
I think this is one where they just got to chalk it off as a bad weekend and move on. I mean, if they did that, they'd have to do that for every weekend. I mean, yeah, like you say, they did really well in Zandvoort, but this is, you know, back to business as usual. Um, yeah, it was a. I mean, to be honest, you you've pretty you've covered it pretty succinctly there, because um, you know, Gasly was the I believe the first to pit. They had a terrible stop, uh, couldn't get the jack to engage, and I think that's indicative of uh, of Alpine's season so far. It's um. It, it it I I it's not as bad as like the McLaren of uh of twenty fifteen, but it's like you know for a works team this is abysmal um and it and it makes it look bad you know a part of me is now thinking that they only changed the name to Alpine so that people wouldn't be um associating their poor performances with Renault that's how bad it is um you know I I I really I struggle to see what they what what what's the plan here they they seem useless toothless yeah it's uh they are they are very inconsistent that is there that is the problem they do have the odd very good weekend but they are a long long way from that third or fourth place in con the constructors championship which they're aiming for at the start of the season so yeah this is not a good one absolutely you expect to be better in singapore less less reliant track in terms of power but catching mclaren is going to prove very difficult i don't see it personally um, then again, I'm a little bit biased on that one, of course. Um, another team that's had a, a very, very bad weekend this weekend is uh, is Hasville. Uh Hulkenberg, 17th, Magnussen, 18th. I don't really even recall seeing him much this race, apart from when they were in the frame, when uh, when they were all lapped down and the Ferraris and uh, the Red Bull of Sergio Perez were battling out on track. Um, very hot track temperature today. We know that Hass struggle uh, to control the temperature of their tyres it, it was it was a recipe for disaster, really. Yeah, they didn't have anything this weekend, and that's probably a sign of what the rest of the season will be. A lot of places they're going to be going to the rest of the year will have uh, higher temperatures or and higher deg, like uh, Singapore here in a couple of weeks' time, Las Vegas, you know, Austin, Mexico. So yeah, it's uh, pretty bad for uh, Haas, and um, I don't know what the expectation is. I don't know what they're aiming for, but you have Williams going out there and doing such a great job, at least with Albon in both facets. Um, Logan is terrible at qualifying, but at least he shows up during the race at times. Uh, but yeah, the Haas team is just it's a rudderless ship. I, I seem to always get them. It must be a joke at this point that I always seem to get the Haas team so I can go and rant about them, but it's getting old uh, because they're not good and um, it doesn't change and it isn't going to change. Uh, they can change the drivers. They can change the sponsors. It's still Haas. It doesn't really matter. Um, they were irrelevant today outside of getting lapped, um, but well, I don't think there's much to – they're not going to score points. Uh, it'll be very hard for them to score points the rest of the season the way they're they're running at the moment. Yeah, it's – I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't plan out the uh, the order that the panellists um, talk about the teams, and I do usually give – try and give uh, give you Hassville because you are American, but unfortunately, yeah, it's not. there's not usually a lot to talk about when it comes to those, those guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just they're just coasted now to the rest of the season. I hope they don't drop further down the constructor standings. And you say about them changing the drivers, they're not going to change the drivers. I believe Hulkenberg and Magnussen have extended for a year next year, so they will have the same drivers, which is a good thing in a sense. They're not the problem; it's the, it's the car really that's the problem. Um, another car that's proven to be a bit of a problem at the moment, Tom, is uh, is Aston Martin. Um, Fernando Alonso doing his absolute best, getting ninth, benefiting for, from from. Um, uh, from Oscar Piastri uh, falling down the order late on. Uh, Blanche Stroll in 14th, which, you know, you can pick on him all you want for that. But the car has just seemed off. And for a car that was second fastest at the start of the season, now they're comfortably behind uh, behind cars like uh, the Williams at certain tracks like today. It's, it's a real fall from grace for them. Yeah, so covering off the team element or the car element, you are right. They have fallen down the order when it comes to development. They started off with a bit of a bang this season. Well, you know, very much a bang. Um, Stroll on his bike had a bang. 
um and now um you know and, and now they they have sort of slightly slight, well not not slightly they, they fall into p4 in the constructors i said before you know are they you know they're going to be costed p3 in the constructors they have as it stands because i believe ferrari overtook them today with you know with p3 four on the road alonso is dragging that team along and oh boy lance stroll right how how can he be so far off his team? I know we talk about gaps between teammates. And Stroll, honestly, right? You know, yes, your people say, oh, but he got a he got the pole position in the final thing. Yeah, yeah well, good for or whatever the call at the time. Good for him. That was three seasons ago, and you can't keep living in the past. And if anything, he's got worse since then. You know, you know, he is you know, he is he qualified plumb last yesterday. And he had no pace at all. And the only reason he's in that team is because of his dad. If his dad didn't own that team, and you know, if it was a different team, you know, if, if there wasn't, you know, you know, if there wasn't a, a direct backing involved, even if there wasn't direct backing involved, at some point a driver has to go. And I'm sorry, actually I'm not. I'm not sorry at all. Lance Stroll has to go. He is not good enough for F1. Yes, he's had a pole position. He choked the win. Yeah, you know, he starts on the front row here, what, 2017. He choked it. And he has just gone downhill. You know, at the very least, in F1, in life, whatever you do, you must at least maintain the level you are at, especially whilst you're going through a sort of development phase. Because he's been in F1 since 2017, and a lot of drivers have come and gone since then who have performed arguably better. You know, he, he's, um, you know, he, he is, yeah, you know, Phil just said it in the chat, he had a front row start in the 2020 on the, on the restart. Yeah, he choked the win then because that car was rapid. You know, he got a fresh inch of tyres and he, he could should have won that. But no, he finished P3 in, in, in the end. And, you know, it's just, I, I'm getting a bit fed up of going in on Stroll, but he's not changing. He's getting worse. And he's so blasé and he's so arrogant about it that's what frustrates me because he shows these glimpses where he could be he could be a genuinely good driver but he, he you, you see these glimpses you know where he'll pull off a move or something. he's done a couple of good overtakes this season but then there's so many daft things and he and he, he has points where you just think what on earth are you doing and this weekend was just another example of that. He was an average of eight tenths off his teammate today. And that is not good enough. But nothing's going to change because daddy owns the team. And I hate bringing that up, but it's painfully obvious now. You, you know, I, I can't disagree with anything you said there. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, it's, it's it's not good enough from Stroll, really. The gap is, is massive. <laughs> between him and Alonso. Yes, Alonso is the world champion. Amazing driver, absolutely. Um, and you thought maybe Stroll could have done decent in the car, but as the car's got worse, he's got even worse on top of that. So it's, uh, yeah, it, he's needing it. Well, I say he's needing, he doesn't need because obviously he's going to be signed on for next year if he's not already. Um, but in terms of his performance and his, you know, his, his overall reputation and stuff as a driver, needs to do better. It's not really good enough. But at least Lonzo got a few points for the team today. That is good. Although they will not be happy at Ferrari overtaking him in the Constructors Championship. Ferrari up to third. Aston Martin down to fourth now. And it's been coming for a little bit, to be fair. So we'll see how that kind of progresses from there. Um, next up, we have uh, Alfa Romeo, Owain. Um, brand new Joe. Not very good today. Uh, down in 15th. Um, but Valtteri Bottas got a point, 10th place, their first point since Canada. It's been about four months, I think, since they've scored any points. Yes, you could say they were a bit lucky, but only two retirements today, so it's not that many. Um, that's a, that's an encouraging sign for them in their battle with Haas. They're only a point behind Haas in the Constructors' Championship now. Yeah, I mean, I think, that, let's be honest, they're, going, they're probably going to overtake Haas, because Haas, I mean, they're the only team to be lapped today, and uh, and, you know, despite the sort of the, the speed of the car not being great and which is a shame actually we didn't see too much of it in that lovely livery that they uh that Alfa Romeo were running um yeah I can I can fully see them going forward uh in the next few races uh you know stealing a point in a here or there you know that actually Bottas did a pretty good job it's the kind of jo uh, job that you'd expect out of Bottas he's he is a you know he's a 10 time Grand Prix winner obviously um 
but yeah, I mean, sort of nothing. I I, I felt like nothing really happened. The, the the most thing, the most sort of notable thing about Joe and Bottas was that they were sort of they were the people that you wanted to get ahead of when you were pitting for. Uh, well, the guys in front were wanting to uh, get ahead of um, and not be sort of stuck up behind. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah, you know, there's, there's it's kind of it's a good performance, but it's kind of an anonymous performance from them both. Yeah, I mean, that's that's Alfa Romeo in a nutshell this season. They, they they are quite anonymous. You don't really see them aside from seeing the names on the timing tower. That's kind of it, really. Um, but the important thing is that they got a P10 today. That's huge for them. That's the first points in a good many rounds, and hopefully it'll kind of spur them on in their battle with with Haas. Um, because Haas are not picking up any points anytime soon. That last Haas's last points came in Miami, so even longer ago. So, so yeah. Uh, but we'll move on. Um, we'll move on to Williams next. Uh, in my notes for the race today, I put that Williams equals rocket ship. Um, that thing was absolutely incredible in a straight line. Uh, Alex Albon, I, I mean, a spoiler alert, I'm going to put him as a driver of the day today. I think he was fantastic. The guy was on an unbelievable uh, defensive drive today to fight off the the McLarens and uh, Lewis Hamilton as well. He was he was brilliant today. Uh, ended up in uh, seventh place. Had a great qualifying as well yesterday. Logan Sargent so close to his first points, eleventh place, just missing out. Uh, but Phil, very encouraging for them today. Um, it's unrealistic for them to expect to expect them to beat Alpine in the constructors championship. But pulling further clear of Haas will do them no harm at all. Yeah, it shows. I mean it proves once again how you shouldn't give up on certain people or dismiss their ability or talent in the likes of Alex Albon uh also having James Vowles come into the uh, into the team and and bring a stability to Williams that hasn't been there for decades um they do have a good car and now they're going to continue building on that uh Albon has been able to show in qualifying his prowess on one lap, but he also has shown his uh, his knowledge and ability in defending because that car has become as wide as anything there is in the world of Formula One. Um, holding off his buddy uh, Lando Norris and uh, McLarens when he probably should have been a uh, boat race by them uh, was huge. Uh, and Honestly, I got to give him credit as well, because with the penalty we're going to talk about here in a moment, uh, Albon actually helped out Lewis Hamilton um, by holding up the McLarens there, too. So um, it was a good day for him, good day for the team. Uh, Logan, it, the qualifying still is a bugaboo for him, but. Uh, his race, he's able to do stuff more races than not. He's able to do move up and actually have it uh, make himself a factor. He's just, it's just a little bit right now. Um, I, I know that I really feel like it's going to happen at some point here before the end of this year. There's plenty of rounds to go. He will get that point. They're in a good position too because there's teams that are just completely out of sorts or completely completely not even existent uh, like Haas or Alfa Romeo or Alpine which when they decide to actually show up you know so I think Williams is on the uh, upswing even if they're not developing their car anymore um, which I think is great to, which is crazy to say so um, it's nice to see Williams back up in a relevant position though. Yeah, absolutely. I I really enjoyed watching that um today. The, those battles between uh between Alpine and the McLarens in particular was fantastic. You know, just going side by side at two hundred miles an hour around the curve of Grande into the um Del Roggio chicane. That that's that's brilliant. You know, that's the stuff that we uh that we want to see at the end of the day. Um, and as well, if you guys are enjoying this podcast, we'd love it if you could leave us a five star review on Spotify or a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. And, and if you're one of the 72% of people who aren't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider helping us out with a like and a subscribe. We usually do go out live after qualifying and the race, just like we're doing today. And you can join us on the uh, on the post show as well, in the live chat, um, and we can answer some of your questions too. So, so yeah, and be sure as well to... Uh, uh, follow or like or whatever it is on whichever social platform it is uh, for our at Grid Talk UK uh, account, which is 
on every single uh, social media, it's got an at symbol. So search us up on there if you want to hear more from us. Uh, so let's go on to uh, McLaren next. Tom, I just gave him a little mention there. They had a, both drivers had a battle with Alex Albon today. Um, uh, Lando Norris ended up in eighth place, couldn't get by Albon in the end, try as he might. Um, Piastri, I must admit, when I first saw the incident with, with Sir Lewis Hamilton and Piastri, I did think, Piastri, what are you doing there? But after seeing the replays, very clearly uh, Hamilton's fault on that one. And the guy is very much hard done by having to change his front wing, dropping out of the points. Um, so unfortunate for him. Uh, but still encouraging pace in the car. And I think, to be honest, other than maybe overtaking Albon, that's probably the best uh, that Norris in particular could have hoped for. Yeah, to be honest, um, the McLaren, you know, they've had some fantastic races recently with good pace and, you know, Almost getting on, uh, you know, sort of getting within a you know, within a whisper of pole position, uh, somewhat in um, uh, Zandvoort last week. It's uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a fall back down to earth for them because they've, they've been riding a wave and rightly so. Um, but I think a weekend where we were expecting them to do really well, uh, or you know, perhaps slightly overhyped. I know I'm certainly guilty of overhyping them for, for this weekend. It's not quite happened for them. Uh, I was a bit concerned when um, I can't remember which car came out of the pits, uh, but they clashed at turn one. I thought we were going to see a bit of a, almost a bit of a puncture in someone's side pod at that point, because that was, uh, <sighs> you'd have thought the team would have intervened at that point and said, you know, I, I think it was Piastri coming out of the pits and he was fairly determined to make it past Lando, or it might be the, the other way around. I honestly cannot remember who it was um, who was coming out of the pits and then who, who went ahead. But either way, the team should have perhaps played that one a bit safer um, and, and, and and you know, either pitted, you know, a lap earlier or, you know, just just you know, just born the one driver of the other one approaching turn one. But ultimately, drivers hate it when they see themselves getting undercut in the pits. You know, we see it a lot with Ferrari, who I really hope I get later on. Um, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it's, I, I really felt for Piastri with that contact with Hamilton because, you know, because I, I, maybe I'm, I'm a little bit biased, but I, I don't see that Piastri did anything wrong myself. You know, he, he was, he was, he was, he was over to the right. If Piastri would have been, say, in the middle of the track, I'd have a very different outlook on it because if he was in the middle of the track, he would have put Hamilton in a position where Hamilton, would have had to have moved to the right to make the corner. Um, you know, otherwise Hamilton would have been in the gravel. But no, Piastri was he was over to the right. It was a shame because it, it ultimately ruined his race. You know, his front wing was hanging off. He had to go and pit for pit for a new one and then he got the fastest lap. Uh, and then got a five second time penalty because he went wheel to wheel with Liam Lawson through Della Rocha and did a hop a hop skip and a jump over the curb. Didn't give the place back, and yeah, it was a bit of a slam dunk. So I think perhaps there's a bit of frustration in that from from Piastri. Uh, Lando just spent most of his race moaning that he was faster, um, and he channeled his inner you know, Lewis Hamilton on that one. Yeah, Piastri definitely unfortunate with that one. Um, few few incidents of uh, cars hopping over chicanes, uh, including what happened to George Russell of Mercedes. Um, I can't remember who he was battling with top top of my head. But he overtook off the track, got a five-second penalty. Uh, Hamilton also, like we mentioned before, got a penalty for... Uh, it was Esteban Ocon that, um, that Russell was battling with. That was right. Um, so Lewis Hamilton as well, getting a five-second penalty. I think both those penalties were probably deserved away, but it didn't change the, the outcome for Mercedes. Fifth for George Russell and sixth for Hamilton. It, it's a good result from what wasn't an overly great qualifying by them. Yeah, obviously it's, uh, it's not... It's not really good enough by their standards. Um, yeah, you know, Hamilton starting eighth and finishing sixth belies the sort of nature of the race. You know, he really had to, uh, he, you know, he really had to sort of, um, you know, really race everyone, um, which is sort of, a, it's more rare that you see that now. Um, it was 100% at fault for the, uh, for, for uh, the incident down at the uh, second chicane. Um, he was moving across right. Uh, Piastri, couldn't uh, you know well is not obliged to use all the road that he you know he could have been a, he could have been a bit further right but yeah he didn't need to be um you know he rightly got a five second time penalty for that um russell i think it was uh who was he 
oh yeah no um he he was too far ahead of uh Ocon by the time that they should that would have had to give it back and um you know they just, it, honestly it was just to have to keep going and and I think as uh as the communications director very um very elo- eloquently put or uh, very diplomatically put you know it's uh it was academic at the end of the day um with both of them they had the lap time speed by the time by the end of it but um they, they'll be sort of you know, I I don't know whether this is going to continue with the Ferrari's form ahead of them, um, because Ferrari had a very quick car, but the you know Mercedes won't be wanting that uh, to continue. Um, yeah, I think they've sort of accepted this. It, it, it wasn't their sort of uh, it wasn't their track. It wasn't their race to win today. Um, they just got to take what they can get out of it, which is a it's been a decent result, and I think they should be uh, they should take a little bit of um, solace in the fact that they you know Russell was battling with. Uh, with with Perez and keeping him behind for quite a while and in, in 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 the car that you know eventually ended up second. Yeah, Russell in particular looked very quick in the early stages of the race and uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton as well. Despite complaining about going onto the medium tires uh, so early, they looked very good by the end. He pulled out a big old gap on Ocon and not uh, Ocon Albon in not that many laps. Um, so yeah, not the best, not the worst for Mercedes. Best they realistically could have hoped for given the uh, pace of the different cars. Um, now, I know Tom. Uh, <laughs> I know Tom requested the Ferrari, but I'm going to give it to uh, give it to Phil for this one. Don't worry, Tom. You get Red Bull, which I'm sure you're going to love very soon. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, Ferrari. Obviously, Carlos signs birthday boy getting pole position yesterday. Uh, held off Max Verstappen for 15 laps. He, I don't know. I think it was probably Alonso who coined the phrase, but uh, he fought like a lion. He gave it absolutely everything to keep that car behind, and I was loving it. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, in the end, wasn't enough. Flat spotted his tyres. I mean, but the thing, the thing that I'd ask about Ferrari, despite a three four, which maybe is, it, it could have, you know, it could have potentially been a little bit more had they been a bit more savvy with uh, with Leclerc for letting him buy signs because signs was really struggling. Leclerc looked a lot faster at certain stages. So despite the three four, Phil, was it was it more Ferrari strategy errors that were causing that? No, I think he was a smooth operator. Yeah. <laughs> smooth operator i wanted to do that so bad um but yeah he did a great job on saturday uh since he is a driver for ferrari and um proved that he probably should be treated more as an equal than his, the monogast who everybody makes a big deal about um i mean i think more about what yeah sure could they have let him go Earlier in the race, I think that probably would have been the strategy. They were literally talking about it on on the broadcast where they were going to have, if they had Leclerc undercut, he would have passed signs and signs would have ended up holding the bag and forth. But um, in the end, signs had, I guess he earned that opportunity there to defend. I mean, Charles Leclerc did everything in his power to almost crash both of them out of the race. And uh, I was having that uh, discussion with Dev, former uh, contributor or contributor here on uh, Formula on the grid talk and all. And we talked about it. And, you know, Ferrari gets a 1 3 in qualifying. Uh, Leclerc's whining about he didn't get a draft. Then he's sitting there, they're in, they're in first and third. He's whining about not having uh, DRS. Then he's whining about he can't pass Carlos sign. Then he's whining that his pants don't fit well. Like, at what point do you just go and say, freaking get on with it and pass the guy? You're you're supposed to be, quote, the better driver. You are the chosen guy at Ferrari. But, you know, the, the, the guy that they hired from 18 other teams, he's driven for 18 other teams and actually didn't get destroyed by Red Bull, which is a miracle. Um, you know, actually went and and has given you the business. And I I give uh, Carlos Sainz credit for how he's handled himself. Uh, probably the upbringing when your dad is a legend, um, having to deal with all that. Um, and also looking up to uh, Fred Alonso and seeing how how much he screwed up in his life. Um, that probably helps with that. But um. In in terms of Ferrari screwing up the strategy, I mean, they actually had decent pit stops today. They gave themselves an opportunity. In the end, they, of course, they didn't have the pace. If Checo wasn't a shell of what he used to be, 
there was a possibility they actually could have finished second and third. So, um, I mean, uh, I, I give credit to Carlos Sainz. I think Ferrari, for what this weekend means to them and to the fan base, the best they could have expected here. Um, it could have gone worse. There was possibilities of it to go worse, but uh, I I think uh, it was a good deal for them uh, relative to what they've done most of the year. A red hot take on the red team from Phil. That's why I gave you Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, I think I think to be honest, it would have been very hard for him to keep Perez behind. But I do think if they were a bit smarter about it, if Sainz just kind of gave gave Leclerc the DRS, because I think Leclerc could have held off Perez if he had the DRS still, but that that gap opened up eventually. But it is a very difficult thing to do. It's a very th- difficult thing to do when you're driving at two hundred odd miles an hour around four different points on the track because. You know, it's easy for us to sit here and say this. They're the ones in the cockpit when it's 50 degrees on the track and, and everything's all going off around them. Um, but in the end, it could have been better, could have been worse. Um, but still, a podium for signs at Monza for in a Ferrari as well. That's something I'll never forget. That's something I'll never forget for the rest of his days. Um, and something else that we're not going to forget about is uh, Max Verstappen making it 10 wins in a row, which is a new Formula One record. No one has done that. There's a few different ways that people counted the nine that I believe Sebastian Vettel and Alberto Oscari had back in the day. There's some conjecture about that. What counts? What doesn't count? Indy, does, does Indy count? You know, things like that. But that's that's all to the history books now. It's 10 out of 10 for Verstappen, Tom. And it was a it was a great race for him today, to be honest with you, to come back like he did, uh, second in qualifying. But, but yeah, uh, Perez as well came back decently well. It took him a while. He had some very good he had some very good battles with uh, George Russell and the Ferraris. Um, one two for Red Bull. I mean, yeah, take it away. There's nothing really much more to say other than that, to be honest. <laughs> no, I think you know, and, and it's not only is it a record for Max, it's a record for Red Bull as a team because they've now won fifteen consecutive races, I believe. A record which was formerly held by Ferrari. Um, well, I've, actually, I think it was joint Ferrari and McLaren. I remember hearing the coverage say. I could be wrong on that, so please somebody correct me, as I'm sure the internet will, um, if if I am wrong. Um, but yes, it, it's a record for both team and driver today. Uh, Max, you know, he he got a better initial launch than Science. He reacted quicker. And Sainz was very aggressive in the way he covered him off. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's a good thing. you know, Because you know, Sainz basically said, look, if you want this position, you're going to have to come and take it. And th- there was a there was a defensive move from Sainz in the, in the first team. You know, when, um, uh, and then, then Max came on the radio and said you know, that was naughty. I don't think that was Max you know, you know, saying, oh, we pushed him off or anything like that. I think that was just Max saying, you know, oh, that's a you know, bit cheeky, that. Because Max knows that's absolutely the kind of thing he would have done. And there was nothing wrong with that. You know, Simon was putting up a staunch defence. It was interesting that the Red Bull, even with DRS, yes, Max was closing from, from, from about five tenths, four tenths, about two tenths. By the time they hit turn one, he just didn't quite have the legs. Um, maybe he was saving a bit. Maybe he was just biding his time and, you know, just pushing signs. Ultimately, signs made the lockup. And then next thing you know, Max is like 1.2 ahead after, after two sectors. Um, yeah, so it, it was it was a sense of it of sort of inevitability, really. Yeah, it was it was never really in doubt. Science did well to hold on, you know, defending Max as long as he did. Um, and then you know, Checo, I think this is Checo needed that race today because it could it would have been very easy to get stuck behind Russell because Russell's a very very good defensive driver. You know, you know, provided he doesn't lock up and go straight on a turn one and get himself a five second penalty. Um, you know, he um you know, he was he was positioning that car in such a good place. You know, he was basically saying to Checo, you know, if if you want to get past, you're gonna have to go, you know, to 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 the left of me. And Russell was able to stop that car. You know, maybe Checo was braking earlier, I don't know, because I think he was conscious that he didn't want to lock up and go straight on. Um and Paris just made him work, made him work, and then after a couple of Slightly more robust rounds of defence, should we say? I still don't think there was anything wrong with the way Russell was defending. Just, just, just for the record, you know, we want to see clean but hard racing, and that's what we saw, apart from Hamilton. And um, and uh, and and you know, ultimately, you know, you know, Ch- Checo just sort of bided his time a bit. Um, it, yes, he could have pushed harder to get it done sooner, but it wasn't really worth the risk because he was never going to catch Max for P one. 
and um, you know P two was the best he could have got today. You know, and for me, he was driver of the day. Now, I know some people will go, you know, oh, but checking in the Red Bull, he's a great car. It's like, well, yes, it is. But we saw in, with that Red Bull, even when it was behind the Ferrari with DRS, it couldn't just breeze past him. It took Max over a dozen laps and took Max to force a mistake out of sign to actually get past him. So the, the Red Bull wasn't looking quite as dominant as we expected today. Um, so, you know, so. For signs to you know to, to do as well as he did, uh, sorry not signs. Uh, Perez, uh, wrong uh, wrong Spanish speaking driver. Um, you know it was a it, it it was a good drive for him today, and and you know yes P two you know best you know best he could have got, and yes his quality performance wasn't as good, but he's never been known for being you know like this worldy qualifier. The kind of race he had today, that's what he's known for, and that's what Red Bull signed him for. You know, the question is, can he keep this kind of level now? Because he will be looking over his shoulder. But yeah, record breaking weekend for 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 Max and um and, and Red Bull and good to see a one two for for the team. And I know Phil especially probably won't like me saying that, but you know, it was uh yeah, it, it, it was good to see Checo up there as well. Yeah, not quite as high up as I'd like to see Checo just one place higher. I just need what I just need that one win to avoid the sombrero. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, we will. Uh, <laughs> you can check out some of our earlier episodes, uh, particularly ones that feature Tom Horrocks to to get some some low down on that. We're not going to go into that discussion again. Um, but those are the ten uh, ten teams and the twenty drivers. We've gone through them all for you today. Um, uh, for, as for driver of the day, I already did give a mention to who I'm going for driver of the day. That's Alex Albon. Um, I thought he did an excellent job today for Williams. Another points, another good points hole for them. Some great defensive driving. Really good to see. Yes, of course, that would have helped on the car, but you still got to you still got to drive the thing. And uh, even if they took all the wings off, which I imagine they did, it would have been a handful in the corners. So, excellent job by them for that. Uh, Phil, who are you going for for driver of the day today? I'm going for Carlos Sainz, a driver for Ferrari, um, because uh, he made a Formula One race interesting for the first time in months, uh, albeit it was for 15 laps, so I didn't have to actually turn off the TV uh, after about two minutes, so I, I give Carlos Sainz credit for that alone. Um, also holding up to the <laughs> idiocy that was all the dive bombs and other attempts that Charles Leclerc was trying to do to him and putting up with the fact that his own team was trying to screw him up because it's Ferrari and their um, strategies. So to be able to fight all that off, get a pole at Monza, get on the podium uh, to me, that's a great weekend for uh, Carlos Sainz. And uh, I personally, I really was, uh, happy to see it and he he's that's the kind of job he can do if you really gave him the support so we'll see what happens with that yep still quite a few uh, uh rounds to go this season so fair enough yeah got a science driver for ferrari cumplianos Felipe. good weekend for him all around nice podium uh so yeah oh Wayne, who's your pick for driver of the day uh i'm gonna have to go with alex Albon. um yeah, for me that I, I thought it was a great defense. You know, the 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 McLaren should be getting past that Williams, um, and neither neither Piastri nor Norris could do it. And Albon held off all, but you know, the, the only people that <laughs> Albon didn't f- uh, fend off uh, were, were what was Perez and Hamilton, I think, and that were it. Um, yeah, he did a great job in defense. Um, in fact, he kind of didn't even really need to defend. He was driving that quickly. You know, even with DRS. Uh, assistance. No, you know, people couldn't get past him. He's, he's, it was he put up a staunch defense on him, um, and you know he's and he's collecting. You know, like you say, it's a, like you said, it's a, it's a great point. You saw. Yeah, absolutely. Great minds think alike. Uh, so that's why Wayne's green with you there. So, uh... <laughs> uh, Tom, yeah, I think you mentioned that uh, Sergio Perez is your driver of the day today. Uh, he is. Yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, signs. You know, for for you know for for the kind of def- defense he put up, etc. I can see why people vote for him, but he ultimately ultimately went for P one to P three. So yeah, not quite sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna 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 go with Perez for that drive. Yeah, good weekend for him. Definitely better than it's, it has been in the past for sure. 
Um, yeah, and so if you want to hear more from our panelists, uh, let's uh, let's get low down on where else you can find them. Phil, I've mentioned that you are part of the Grip Strip podcast. Where, what is that, and where can people find it? Uh, thanks, Georgia. Grip Strip podcast. You can find it anywhere you hear podcasts. Uh, you download or whatever. Uh, you can find it myself and Josh Hafine go and talk about all things motorsports, both in America and the world. Uh, talk about NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula One, of course. Um, albeit briefly, uh, but we talk about all different motorsports and uh, we do it weekly. So uh, you find us at Grip Strip Pod on uh, Twitter X. You can find me at PG Matthew 28 on X, Twitter X and uh, JP Huffine on Twitter X. Uh, and then you can find our Grip Strip Podcast YouTube page and also um philipgmatthew.com where my blog site which also has uh my the shows uploaded every single week so thanks uh george as always and uh great to be on with tom and owain and uh great work by just tfi over there great name there so um as always so um always love being on the grid talk yeah and we love having you on phil as well thank you for that uh tom uh you are one half of the uh, the wonderful formula talk team uh formula three has wrapped up this week and formula two it's been a big weekend over there as well uh you guys will have a review coming up for italy soon won't you we will indeed yes um you know there's just a little bit to talk about you know i did put out a quick sort of 10 minute piece um after the championship for formula three was decided uh i'm not going to give any spoilers um but yeah, for, uh, Formula Talk you can find wherever you find Grid Talk, which I'll leave yourself to plug, George. Yeah, definitely go check out those guys for the lowdown on the on the on the feeder series. I'll be honest, I wasn't up early enough to watch the Formula Three uh, race this morning, so so I'll definitely check out the the podcast when it's up uh, to go through things there. Um, Owen, is there anything you want to plug? Um, do, do you want do you want to see my what are they called? Do we call them Zeets now or something or X's? What are they I'm, called? I'm out of that world and I'm staying out and I'm proud of the fact I'm staying out of it. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> click the X button on it. Just 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 yeah, just turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nothing nothing of note. <laughs> oh, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Um uh, but yes, uh, Grid Talk is available on YouTube where most episodes are recorded live, such as this one, as well as Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal Pocket Cast. Just search Formula One Grid Talk on all of those. And for our massive back catalog of shows today, I had to do a double take actually when I saw the uh, the episode number today. I was like, it can't be that high already, but it is over 300 now. We're going to pass 400, I'm sure, at some point this season as well. And uh, yeah, please consider supporting us on Patreon as well so we can get mics, lights and better recording equipment and do things like Grid Talk Live again, which I'm really, really looking forward to doing it at some point, hopefully later this year. Uh, and yes, also make sure you subscribe to be the first uh, to know when each new weekly episode is released as well. That's on that's on YouTube there. And we're going to be back next weekend to preview the Singapore Grand Prix. Thank you very much for listening to Grid Talk, uh, brought to you today by Bet Online. And goodbye. Recording stopped. Okay, we going out on the on the live stream still. Yeah, post show is on. So I did see we had a few had a few comments in the live chat. Let's have a look. Uh Jared Bradley, one of our uh, regular commenters, said, "I'm very unhappy about Hamilton's." Oh, the comments just disappeared. Nice one, phone. Let's try that again. <laughs> I'm very unhappy about Hamilton's move on Piastri and knocking him out of the points. A five-second penalty doesn't seem to cover that. I mean, I, I'm disappointed as well. And it's happened twice to now. It happened in, in Austria as well, I believe, um, where he was just caught in a, an incident that wasn't his fault, dropped him out of the points, had his front wing damaged. Um, is five seconds enough for that? You you penalise the incident, not the outcome, which is which is what I said in the Slack chat. So, you know, it's just like it's if it was a bigger accident, you know, you know, say for example, you know, had had Hamilton moved across more aggressively, a la Leclerc twenty nineteen, I think there there could have been cause for a for, for a more harsh penalty. I think it probably seems almost lenient because it ruined Piastri's race 
Whereas it didn't affect Hamilton's race at all because he still finished, accounting for the penalty, he still finished two and a half seconds ahead of Albon in P7. So it didn't impact Hamilton's race, but it ruined Piastri's race. Piastri didn't then help himself, but Piastri was running well in the points and Piastri didn't do anything wrong, in my view, didn't do anything mm-hmm. wrong. So that's, when when people say, and Jared, I, I, I feel your point, and I, I do agree with you that five seconds seems harsh, but if you look at what F1 penalised or what the FIA penalises, um, it was right in that sense. That's just my view anyway. I don't necessarily agree with it. Mm, I, I don't know. It's, it's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's not changed his position, but you're right, you penalise the incident rather than the outcome. I think, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe 10 seconds would have been better, but it, it's then you're getting into the realms of what else have you given a 10 second penalty for? What else have you given a five second penalty for? And exactly. I don't have a big list of either of those on off the top of my head, I'll be honest. So, Yeah, do you know, this is part of, the, part of the issue with this sport is that, you know, it, 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 you look at what else has got a five second penalty in the past and and, and you, you, know, you don't find yourself sort of comparing it and so it could be like a massive crash somewhere. And don't get me wrong, I thought Piastri and Hamilton were about to have a plane crash because the way Hamilton's car pitched after he moved across, you know, Hamilton did do well to keep it under control. Um, but it's just, you know, you then run into that sort of like minefield of, you know, what constitutes this penalty, what constitutes that penalty. And pe- people do let their emotions get in the way, which is entirely understandable. And to be honest, if we start digging into this, we might as well ask Freddie P. Massa for his for his lawyers because we're going to be <laughs> digging into this till Kingdom Cup. <laughs> oh God, yeah, Massa and his bloody legal battle. That's a. <laughs> I know. Honestly, just leave it out, hun. Yeah, let's let's not give that any air time. No, 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 no. It's not worth it, mate. But yeah, you know, that's that's my view on it. But you know, I appreciate I just jumped in there. Um, yeah, chaps. Anyone else got anything to say on that? Nothing of note. Fair enough. I think you covered it. And we'll move on then. Uh, Tom Horrocks, one of our regular hosts on here, says, I hope the handsome man in the white shirt is on again. He knows what he's talking about. I don't remember wearing white very often on these shows, but uh, yeah, good. I'm glad to be back for you. Um, Yeah. Tom, you need to get your eyes tested. You're all man now. Oh God! You see, I can't. I, I've got. I've got to take the mic as much as I can with Tom because I. I really. I really do think I'm going to be wearing that sombrero at this rate. I can't see anybody beating Max Verstappen. We'll see what uh, happens in two weeks' time. King of the streets. King of the streets. I've been building it up on the Slack chat. I've been building it ever since yeah. I made this bet. I'm like King of the streets. I'm not very confident though. I just. I just no. personally don't see it. <laughs> no, me neither. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's move on. Who else we've we got commenting on here? Um, <laughs> Jared also put. Um, I think that's the first time I've heard someone get the full name, engine name correct. Tom, I think that's referring to the Red Bull oh, Honda the, powered by the, Dreams engine or whatever. Yeah, it is. Oh, oh, the, oh, the Red Bull powertrain Ford Honda powered by Red Honda Power Bolt. I don't know. I thought you <laughs> forgot. I, I thought you forgot Duramax or whatever in there. But apart from that, yeah, it's, it's, it's slip of Cosworth and Super Tech in there will be sorted. And a Mecha yeah. Chrome. Mecha, yeah. Oh I, God. I, it's, it's not Formula 2, Phil. Well, they used to be powered by Renault, so... That's... I know, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I'll tell you one thing I want to bring up, if anybody's still listening oh, no. on, on the post show. Ferrari. Yeah. Cool. I would wager, and I'm not going to, because I don't fancy losing my house, um, that <laughs> if if Leclerc and Sainz were the, were the other way around on track, and if it had been Leclerc on pole and Leclerc defending from Max... And signs in P3, we would not have heard that radio message where they said, "Go for it." At the end, we would have heard team orders. We would have heard them say, "Bring it home," in three, four, two, three, whatever position they were in. They did almost everything they could to screw signs. Why on earth they didn't pit him as soon as he flat spotted those tires? They could see how powerful the undercut was. Maybe I'm being a bit, um, you know, like tinfoil hat, like ooh, but. Even if Ferrari say both drivers are free to race each other, yes, they are. But Leclerc was doing everything in his power to basically annihilate science, especially going into turn one. Well, I'd say about, I mean, I thought the exact same thing as you when he flat spotted his tyre and Verstappen got past. And Brundle said the same thing as well in the mm. commentary. 
And he said that, oh, actually, he'd be behind like Bottas and a bunch of other traffic. So it didn't make sense to do it then. But what I was referring to in the show was more when so I think Sainz should have potentially hung back a little bit when uh, Leclerc was fighting with Perez. Because if Leclerc has DRS, Perez is going to find it really, really difficult to get past. He only got past because Leclerc lost DRS. And did, was it was it my eyes as well? But did Leclerc seem to have DRS issues today? Like it was closing and opening several times on the straight. The worst yeah, times when that. it should have been. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think there was any radio or anything about it though, which was. Weird. I didn't hear any radio, but I did notice a few times when I was expecting yeah. it to be open. It didn't seem to be. Yeah. It's like Max in Spain last year. I pressed the button 50 effing thousand times. <laughs> George Russell had the best um, radio today. Right? We was battling with Perez and like absolutely doing everything he can to keep him behind. And his engineer is just like, uh, you just uh, save a bit of time, a bit of management now. It's just like, he's yeah, oh, up, just... up my rear end. I can't, I can't. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I was quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was he was saying like you know just do a bit of time saving between turn six and turn eight, and George was like, uh, "Mate, don't know if you're sure, but there's a car at my behind." <laughs> yeah, it's just like you know, yeah. Oh. This makes you wonder if the engineers are actually watching the feed as well as all the data screens. No, I, I they're most they're mostly watching the data feed. I've heard about it. Yeah, like they they the data feed is the more interesting thing. Like you know, you you can tell from the telemetry afterwards that you know that's what that's when things are going bad. But yeah. You might. To be fair, you, you'd know because the time would be really small, and they must be looking at the timing screen <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, they must be looking at that delta to him and Paris behind. Yeah, I got. I got to be honest. I thought we were going to be in for a bit of a dull race, especially when Max got passed. No, it's quite interesting. But no, it, it was really, really interesting this race. It, it, it was surprisingly it was, so. Yeah, and it was just good to have a battle for the lead. And a genuine battle for the lead that didn't last one lap or three laps because I thought it'd be done by lap four. But given we went all the way to lap 14, you've got to say, first of all, kudos to Sainz because he drove the wheels off that thing today. Mm -hmm. Well, like an absolute line, like I said. Yeah. Oh. To see. <laughs> you hate that phrase, don't you? I, I, I don't know why. I, I don't know it's why. Quite like the lion. <laughs> 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 Defend oh. like a lion. Well, oh. like the Dutch lion. <laughs> Gosh, Dutch lion was roaring. Oh, right. Well, that's that's most of the comments. Jared has left a lot of comments on there. Thank you for uh, thank you for contributing with those. Really do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, we'll be back. I'm not exactly sure when, uh, but sometime at the weekend uh, to preview Singapore. Probably come out on Monday the podcast. So we'll uh, yeah, we'll see you guys then for that. All right.